are then on the uh, H1100 unit. This is on Send 93. We've looked at Sender 95 complete. This is Sender 93 with the doors open. So, Sender 93's RF output appears on the coax at the top. It's not coax like you'd expect at home. It's rigid aluminium inner, or copper inner and aluminium outer. And the five kilowatts goes along the coax and appears into the top of the sender where it goes downwards and enters into a ferrite ballon. This is located deep in the bowels of the sender and is a devil to change if it goes faulty. So let's go around the corner now and look at the, uh, the pen RF stage and then we'll work our way through onto this side onto the final RF stage and then we'll look at the uh, power output at the top there. So let's go around the corner. Yeah, the RF comes in on the coax, hits the ballon, and then is split between the two tubes. Here's one of the tubes here, and um, the other one is behind. They're both ceramic bodied ones. You can see the white, the white pot finish. Marconi's uh, described the wave change procedure for these transmitters as that you remove the plug-in coils. Here's an example of one of the plug-in coils. Plug-in. Goodness me, I need to get stronger. There we are. This is the plug-in coil, and out it comes. See, it's got a locating peg here. And uh, a set of them are available for all the different frequencies or the wave bands that we use. This is uh, 17 megahertz and 15 megahertz. I just, just slots it. And away we go. The coils were not made by Marconi's themselves. We understand that they were made by a, a firm in the UK called Boozy and Hawks. And to anybody that plays a trombone or other uh, brass musical instruments, that's often the source of uh, such an instrument is Boozy and Hawks. So they're into making turns of coil. Here uh, on the pen stage, you can see the way that the filament supply is routed through the uh, pyro tanax feed choke. And there are some suppression resistors on there, so the fills are rooted down there. The reason for that is that the RF is fed into the cathodes of the valves, and you don't want the RF to go down the cathode, down the filament supply. You want it to go into the, the filament itself, into the cathode. So you have to have an RF choke to prevent that happening, and there it is. As I say, the grid's grounded here, and the anode is the boiler in which the anode sits of this tube, steam-cooled, so the water, this deionized water, comes up through the, uh, through the white pipe into the bottom of the, of the boiler, overflows a weir, and the steam and uh, excess water go off down this glass tube for insulation, and the, all that lot's taken down the back and then condensed. So that's how that works. That's absolutely standard vapor cooling. Very efficient, because of course you take the water from water into steam, which takes a lot of heat away. This is this uh, peculiar thing here, is a fixed capacitor, value of 1,000 picofarads, glass, made by Jennings in 1963. It's one we haven't broken. You can see the uh, large transformers underneath to supply the uh, current for the tubes. OK, so out the anode via that capacitor, and we hit the, uh, we hit the fills again via this coil, another plug-in coil. We hit the fills of the output stage, and if, if we just look below, you'll see the, uh, the large boiler within which the BY1144 output tube is, is mounted. These two uh, plates here, nice smooth edges here, to prevent any RF, to prevent voltage flashover, high voltage flashover. These have got two resistors mounted. That's copper at the top on the boiler, and that's copper at the bottom on the boiler. And across that are two 68 ohm resistors to stabilize that stage. It looks weird that you've got copper and copper and resistors, but it does work. You can see a much larger steam pipe to the right-hand side. And, of course, the ceramic on these output tubes is much larger than on the pen stage. The pen stage gives about 40 to 50 kilowatts output. These tubes give 125 kilowatts each. So um, it's a much larger tube. The fill supplies are much more uh, comprehensive. So you've got four chokes for two tubes. Here's one of them. The one there. There's, within the tube are two separate filaments. 
at uh, 325 amps at 9 volts on each one and there's the there's the connections to one set of the filaments and off it goes into the valve okay that's the uh, that's the RF stage from the drive stage let's go have a look at the RF stage from the output okay well here we are in the RF section this is the actual output stage of the sender you can see the two RF tubes mounted in the boilers again they've got the water pipes below just like on the pen stage and um, different here of course in that you've got one of the output coils this is a 15 megahertz output coil also works on 13 megahertz which corresponds with the frequency on the synthesizer that you've uh, just seen um, 30 megahertz coil the HT the high voltage modulated high voltage comes from an enclosure at the rear called the modulation enclosure and it appears at the center tap here through this little bit of parasitic stopper and then onto the center of the coil so that's onto one anode, one plate, and that's onto the other plate. That is tuned by two capacitors underneath, vacuum variable ones, to work from the handles at the front and resonates at 15 or 17 or 13 megahertz. That's that coil. The coil below is the coupling coil and is mounted on this truck. The truck's motorized and we can work it from those buttons that we saw at the front and from here if we wish to set it up to what position we need. And the further it moves away, the less power is sucked out of the valve, and the closer it gets, the more power. So we can run up to 250 kilowatts in this position, and if we reverse it a little bit, we can run as low as about 100 kilowatts quite reliably. The, uh, the RF passes then, is now converted from a balanced system, again, to a balanced system. It's so a balance to balanced output and it whizzes up through the arms here and then through the coils and capacitors inside this filter. This cuts any spurious off above 30 megahertz. Um, it wends its way and eventually ends up on the two connections at the back there. You can see they're earth down at the moment, they're open, they're not connected and they're earth down above so that we can work in here and not get pick up from other antennas on the field with senders radiating. So that's a broken connection to the outside world. When we shut the doors and lock it up, that becomes complete. And on the two connections at the top, they're, they're the actual 320 ohms output balance feeder. There they are at the top there. And they take the, the power down the field in a balanced system. So that's a 250 kilowatt output RF stage. Let's go and have a look at the modulator now.